Hallelujah. He's done great things. Hallelujah, Jesus. Faithful God. Holy God. Righteous God. Hallelujah. We bless you, Jesus. We install you, Jesus. We exalt you, Jesus. We lift you up, Jesus. Oh, there's none like you. There's none like you, Jesus. There's none like you, Jesus. There's none like you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, bless your name, bless your name. Bless your name, bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory to God. There's none like you. There's none like you. There's none like you, Jesus. Oh, bless your name. Hallelujah. Come on, clap those hands, everybody. Come on, give it to him. Come and go with me to my father's house. Or to my house. Or to my house. Oh, come and go with me to my There is peace. Oh, come and go with me to my Oh, to my Oh, to my Oh, come and go. Oh, to my There is, yes, oh, yeah. Oh, nothing but joy over there in my
everybody. If today is your first time worshiping with us here in Mount Zion, would you please stand?
God. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Great is his yes, faithfulness. Great is. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Your faithfulness, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, bless your name. Bless your name. Bless your name, God. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory to God. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. He's a faithful God. My, 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 Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Great is your faithfulness, Jesus. Oh, yes. Bless your name. Bless your name, Jesus. You can be seated if you can. Oh, bless your name. Bless Hallelujah. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Wonderful Jesus. Bless your name. Bless your name. Glory, glory, glory to God. Oh yes, oh yes. Hallelujah. 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 Bless your name, bless your name, bless your name, Jesus. Oh, he's faithful. Faithful to heal. Faithful to deliver. Faithful to set free. Great is your faithfulness, God. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes, the name alone is excellent. Glory, glory. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Worthy of our praise. Worthy of our praise. Worthy to be worshipped. Worthy to be adored. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Wonderful Jesus. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, bless your name. Bless your name. Bless your name. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. We love your name. We adore your name. We lift up your name. Jesus. Jesus. A present help in that time of trouble. Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he is. Oh, bless your name, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wonderful Jesus. Oh, you may be seated if you can. We're going to get ready for the scripture readers this morning. Hallelujah. Old Testament, my God. Old Testament scripture. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Oh, he's here. He's here. He's here. He is here to deliver, yeah. to encourage you, to mend the brokenhearted. My God, my God, my God. He desires your worship. He desires your worship. Oh, yes, God. Yes, God. You're worthy, God. Get the glory, God. My, 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 my God. Elder Hagers with the Old Testament scripture. Elder Moss with the New Testament scripture. My God, have your way, Jesus. of our God. Hallelujah. Ah, Jesus. The Old Testament scripture is found in the book of Psalms. The 37th chapter, the first through the sixth verse. Do not fret because of evildoers nor be envious of the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and Feed on his face. 
faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Let's go, let's go. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, the believing of his holy word. Yeah. 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 Praise the Lord, everyone. Our New Testament reading will come from Romans the eighth chapter, verses 26 through 30. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us. With groans that words cannot express. With groans that words cannot express. Mm. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. And we know that in all things God works for the good, for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. Now clap your hands and give God glory. Thank you. 
panteth for the water so my soul longeth after thee where the worshipers where the worshipers you you alone are my heart my heart's desire
Надо на мост я, да, 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 по мосту. Let's all, let's all rise in this sanctuary. Hallelujah. As you turn with me, please, to Exodus chapter 15. Cornelia, you may come down. You may be more comfortable coming down. He lead Everybody come on He lead The quiet The quiet oh. While the Levitical order comes down, every citizen of the kingdom under the sound of my voice, but especially those whom God has entrusted to me, lift your hand, open your mouth, and worship him. The one hand you got free. Ah. In Exodus chapter 15, verse 22, Then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur. I want to read that a little differently uh, for the sake of giving you better understanding. And they went out into a Shur wilderness, and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. When they came to Marah, they could not drink the water of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore it was named Marah. So the people grumbled at Moses, saying, What shall we drink? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, and he threw it into the waters and the waters became sweet and the waters became sweet there he made for them a statute and regulation and there he tested them and he said if you will give 
earnest heed to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight and give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have put on the Egyptians. For I, the Lord, am thy healer. May the Lord add a blessing, a purpose, and encouragement to the reading, the believing, and the receiving of his word. And before you take your seat, I want to encourage you not to take this portion of scripture about none of the diseases. Don't take it for yourself. It was not for you. It was for Israel in that day. God said, what I put on the Egyptians, I will not put on you if you obey me. However, what you can take to the bank is Isaiah. When he said he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquity, the chastisement of our peace fell upon him and by his stripes we are healed. As a topic today, if we are to have one, and I don't know if we'll get that far, let's see what the Lord does because he did not really give me too much other than an outline. I've been working on this and studying on this all week long, but we have an outline, and I want you to just touch three people, especially if you know it for yourself, and tell them Jesus is sweet. Now, precious ones, before you take your seat, I want you to grab somebody, shake them up with their dead self, scream it at them, Jesus is sweet. And you may be seated in the sanctuary. The sweetness of Jesus There is nothing else in this world that is consistently as sweet as Jesus. But if you do not know him, he is not sweet. We live in a world of people, as I've been going over repeatedly, who make up their own laws, their own regulations, their own moralities, and the whole nine yards, and we, our world system, even here in America, has pushed Jesus to the back of the line. And it, it kind of upsets me. On the one hand, just stay with me for a moment. You listen to Fox Radio, and they are so biased until it's unbelievable to me but they will use the scripture when it's convenient. And then you listen to others. I mean, we can even go as far as Bill Maher, and you've heard me speak of him before. He is an extremely, extremely well-read, intelligent man. He is a smart man, but he is always talking about the faith of others. He says he is an atheist, and he does not believe in religion, but I take issue with him. I think he is probably the most religious person I know. He religiously talks about people of faith. That's what religion is. I'm, I'm here today to once again talk to you about relationship. But before we go into the scripture, I've been praying about certain things and for a while, and I believe there is a reason. There are a few reasons why people, whether it's here or anywhere else, people are not getting saved the way they once were. And the reason why is because, number one, with all of the rhetoric on television and radio, in the magazines, with all of the stuff because of the internet that they're putting out about pastors and preachers and bishops, People say, what's the use? Church has become more entertainment 
than learning about the Lord Jesus Christ. That's one of the reasons. Another reason is I believe people can stay at home and they really believe this. They believe that they, as long as they are good people, that they're going to heaven. And maybe that's true. I don't know. But as far as what I read in the scripture, you've got to come through Jesus. And, and if you come through Jesus, there ought to be some sign. Amen, somebody. And so when I look at this, I, I, I compare it to us. Y'all give me about 20 minutes. I compare it to us and how we are always crying. We are always complaining. We always want stuff. There are so many users in the church. They'll use you up until they can't use you anymore. And when you finally tell them no, they get mad at you. We do God the same way. We do God the same way. And that's what happened here in this story. Prior to this story, God had brought them out of Egypt. They had prayed to God for over 400 years for a deliverer. Now that 400 can stand for just plainly speaking a long period of time. And some of us have prayed to God for a long time for certain things. Stay with me somebody. We prayed to God for months, weeks, years for a certain thing and it hasn't happened yet. It didn't happen to them according to the scripture for 400 years. So it could have been 300. It could have been 600. I don't know. It was a long time before God in the form of a man by the name of Moses showed up and told them, I'm your deliverer. I'm what you've been praying for. Now, here is another point. This is not my main point. But many times, when our answer shows up, it doesn't look like what we want. And so they fought Moses. They fought him the whole way, though Moses was trying to help them. They were fighting him. And so God in his infinite mercy and grace, and God is so gracious, and God is so merciful. Y'all stay with me. I preached hard on Wednesday. I ain't preaching hard today. God is so merciful. God is so gracious. And God is so good. Listen to this, that he'll cause you pain for your good. I will explain that in one second. God through Moses led them out. Good God from Zion. Led them out from Egypt, let them out from their bondage. But you see, it's just like us, y'all. Hear me carefully. We want purpose. We want favor. We want blessing, but we don't understand that with the favor of God comes responsibility. You want a husband, but you don't want to clean your house. You want a wife, but you don't want a job. You want a partner, but you can't be faithful. It's quiet. You want money, and every time God tries to give you money, you waste it. You want the blessing of God, and God gives you a new job, but you won't pay your tithes. With blessing comes responsibility. I have to work to keep what God gives me. Hallelujah. Stay with me. So God brought them out, Brian. And then when they got out, they thought it was just a happy day. Nothing else to do. Now, they come down to a sea, and the Egyptians are pursuing them. Pharaoh was not going to let go. That a preach right there by itself. Let me take two minutes to preach that. Pharaoh was not going to let go easy. Just like in your life, the thing that God has delivered you from or trying to bring you out of, and you think that the enemy is dead, he ain't dead. 
He's waiting for another opportunity to try to cause you some more harm. Oh, yeah. And so God brought them out, brought them down to the sea, the sea in front of them, the Egyptians behind them, Pharaoh leading the way. They start crying again and hollering and complaining. And Moses said, because he was probably so frustrated, Moses said, stand still and hold your peace, and you'll see the salvation of the Lord. And then God said, Moses, what you talking about? Shut up. I didn't tell you to stand still. If you stand still, they're going to kill you. Keep moving. I know it's a sea in front of you, but keep moving. I know it doesn't look like you're going to ever come out, but... And the only way that sea is going to get out your waist, hear me, you're going to have to step in it. Because if you step in it, that is an indication that you got the faith for the waters to part. If you don't make no step, don't expect God to do nothing. God said, I told you already, keep moving. If you step in the water, I'll push the water back. But if you stand there looking at the water, if you go ahead and enroll in college, God said, I'll make a way. If you take the chance of starting that business, God said, if I told you to do it, I'll make a way for your business to be successful. But as long as you're sitting back waiting for me to do something, I'm trying to tell you to go ahead. It's not my time to do nothing yet. It's your time to do something. So you go ahead and get your business started. And after you get it started, then I'll start opening doors for you. Don't look at the obstacle. Don't look at what's in front of you. Hallelujah. Don't even look at the disease. Hallelujah. There's so many people. My sister, I'm, I'm on here about this all the time. I was on my mama about it. I'm on my other sister about it. I'm on different people about it. Stop bringing me problems without solutions. Seek the solution. And when I give it to you, don't fight me on it. Are you understanding me, somebody? God is saying to us this morning, okay, I brought, sent you a deliverer. Now, you had to believe him and you had to pack your stuff. You don't like moving, but you got to pack your stuff. See, this is a trip that can't nobody pack your stuff for you but you. I'm talking about this trip of faith. Can't nobody pack your stuff. They don't know what box to put it in. I'm trying to help my church. God says, come on, and they got through the sea. Mm. Mm. It looks like we're on our way. Look what God has done. I just walked through the Red Sea with walls of water on each side of me. And the last one came out, and they turned around, and the devil thought he could do what the children of God could do. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, that'll preach right there, Sandra. Agent, that'll preach. Grab your neighbor's hand and say, the devil can't do what you can do. So, say, I'm... Tell them, I'm talking about your next door neighbor. I'm talking about your coworker. 
I'm talking about those folks you go to school with. They can't do what you can do because they don't have the same power that you have unless they serve in the same God that you serve. The same blood that saved you will kill the enemy. That's why every time a devil gets on your track, just start pleading the blood. They'll get away from you. I guarantee you. Just say the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus, the blood, the blood. You start pleading the blood, you're going to make them think you crazy or something wrong with them. They're going to get the hell away from you. I guarantee you that. And mind you, I didn't cuss. I said they're going to get the hell that they brought your way. They'll back it up. And so God killed the pursuing Egyptians. Now, I may not get to where I want to go, but can y'all stay with me a little while longer? In your life, who, who, what is the pursuing Egyptian? What stress has been following you? What depression has been following you? What bills can't you just seem to get rid of? What Negro still messing with you? What sexual perversion are you still dealing with? What's that enemy that's still following you? You think you dealt with it, and then it raises its ugly head right back up. The problem is, you didn't do this a revelation. This is a revelation. You didn't do what Israel did. You didn't do what Moses did. You went through the blood, but you did not invite them in. Because you can't kill them. But the blood can what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing of Jesus. How precious is the flow that makes me white. No other. Touch somebody and say, nothing but the blood. And so they got through. And then suddenly we're in chapter 15. And when they got through, the scripture says that Moses began, when the Egyptians were killed, Moses began to, to extol God and to praise God. And then when he finished, Miriam, his sister, put out the tambourine and led the other women in a praise service because the Egyptians were dead. Oh, they were shouting. But they were shouting ignorantly. They didn't know. They forgot. The Egyptians may be dead, but I'm still in the wilderness. Now, it may not be nobody chasing me. But I'm still in the desert. Many times in the scripture, the desert is synonymous or typifies life. Every last one of us, those with the money, those without, those with health, those who are dealing with infirmity, those with issues, those with none, every last one of us are in the desert. As long as you own this plane, you in the desert. 
and God has kept you in the desert for a reason. Because they got through and they kept traveling. Watch this. And they got thirsty. Watch this. And started complaining again. Church folk. Watch this. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. They made a mistake that I want to share with you today. And I would like to ask you to help me preach this by grabbing your neighbor's hand and say to them, because you just experienced a great victory, you need to expect the challenge. You know how you got that promotion, gave you a $15,000 a year raise, and you ain't never danced in church before, and you came in church and just went to jumping up and down and tripping over your feet because you're so happy for that money. You're not happy for Jesus. You're happy for that money. If you were happy for Jesus, your praise would not be conditional on you getting a raise. I know something, something just hit me. I got to stop for a moment. I'm going to tell you all something right now in the midst of this teaching, and I'm almost done with it. I'm not saying it for no other reason but to help you. Some of y'all who are going through the most, whatever your situation is, it just dropped in my spirit. Whatever it is, you are the ones that right now God is saying, lose your mind over my goodness. saying, don't wait till the battle is over. Praise me right now. Ah, Shabbosa. Stop for a moment. Let me try to help you. Sit back down. Five more minutes. I'm out your way. Five more minutes. I'm out your way. What Miriam and the women did was not praise. It was excitement. There is a difference between excitement and praise. The Lord has, I believe it's the Lord that's given me a revelation on this. Praise only is birthed from experiential pain. If you've never had pain, you don't have praise. You may have worship, but not praise. So for those of us that God wants to elevate, those of us that God is not going to take second best from, those of us that God is preparing for something, those of us that God has purpose, those of us that God is going to use in a mighty way, baby, before you get there, you're going to go have to go through enough hell to learn how to praise God in bad situations. Almost done. Touch your neighbor and say, praise them in the bad. Praise them in the bad. You ain't heard me yet. I'm almost done with this. Smack somebody and say, praise them in the bad. Praise them in the bad. Praise them in the bad. Now tell him, because he's about to turn it around. He's about to turn it around. He's about to turn it around. But he can't do it till you praise him. 
He can't do it until you believe him. Watch this, Nate. Watch this. Y'all said, I'm almost done. They got out there in the desert and could not find usable water on their own. But can't you see that was the plan of God? I have to be with that way in my own life. I look at so many of you that's going through, and you can't seem to do it on your own. Don't you see? It's only because you in the desert. You was all right in Egypt. But when God called you out, he called you into the desert. And in the desert, oh, this is a preacher if y'all go with me. And tell your neighbor, in the desert, you ain't got no choice but to trust God. Tell your neighbor, you got to call him for everything. You got to call him in the morning. You got to call him at noon. You got to call him in the evening. I need everybody that's been doing it <laughs> to tell three or four people, I've been calling and I'm going to keep on calling. My God. I'm going to call till he breaks through. I'm going to call till he makes a way. I'm going to call till he brings me revelation. I'm going to call until he shows his power. I'm going to call him because there's power. Yay! 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 Hallelujah! And so, y'all, what I'm trying to tell you, I gotta shut this down right now, but what I'm trying to tell you, hey, thank you, baby. Hallelujah! That when it comes to a bitter thing. Don't you always say it's the devil. Because it may not be the devil. It's just that you're in the desert. And when it comes to bitter waters, every last one of us at some point in our life are, are going to have to taste some bitter waters. Everything in your life is not going to be sunshine. I wish I could find the church in here. I said everything in your life is not going to be roses. But God is going to bring you to some bitter waters. But thank God, there's a tree called the branch of Jesse. There's a tree, some of us know him as the bright and morning star. There's a tree. Some of us know him as the Rose of Sharon. There's a tree. Some of us know him as the Alpha and Omega. There is a tree. Somebody knows him as a healer. There is a tree. Somebody knows him as a way maker. There is a tree. Somebody knows him as a deliverer. There is a tree. Somebody knows him as a provider. There is a tree. I call him Jesus. And every time I get to that bitter place, all I got to do is throw some Jesus on it. Jesus can take a bitter thing and make it taste better. It doesn't mean that the water is going to change its composition. It just means that the water will taste better. Your challenge will be more manageable with Jesus. Your struggle will be more manageable with Jesus. Your storm will be more manageable with Jesus. 
there is something, 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 something about that name, something about Jesus that will make you feel better when you want to feel bad. I wish I had a church in here today. Somebody, somebody, somebody is a witness. Somebody has tried him. Somebody found out that he's all right. I'm done, y'all. I'm done. I'm done, y'all. I'm sorry, but somebody needs to be praising him right now. Go ahead. Clap your hands. All these people. Shout under God with the voice of triumph. This God is our God. And he's our God forever. Don't worry about tomorrow. This is for, and I don't know in which area it's for, but I sense the Spirit of the Lord sailing me to say to somebody, and, and I need human contact, so y'all touch them. I'm just trying to hear God work. Touch them, look in their eye, whoever it's for. It may not be for you, but look in the, everybody here, grab somebody, touch them, look in the eye, and say, get ready for the move higher. Oh. Who is that for? There's a move coming for somebody. My God. Girl, I gotta help. I gotta help. I gotta help. I'm trying to push somebody on through. Grab somebody else and scream it at them. Get ready for your move higher. With every head bowed, every eye closed, is there one in here? who is not saved and you want to be saved today, or maybe you're not sure and you want to be sure if you're here today with everybody standing, including those of you that don't understand. Stand up if you want to be saved today or be sure about it. Will you raise your hand and raise it high right now in Jesus' name? You want to be saved if you want to be saved. If she wants to be saved, let her come on. Hallelujah. Is there somebody else? Hallelujah. That's it. That's it. Hallelujah. Y'all bring her on. Is there another? Is there another? Just raise your hand and raise it high. If saints keep on praying, is there, you want to be saved? Is there somebody else who wants to be saved? Just come on down. 
in the name of Jesus. I believe there's somebody else, and we are waiting. God will save you. Saints of God, I want you to ask your neighbor, ask them, are you saved? And y'all answer them. God bless you. God bless you. Man. Take her out, lead her to the Lord right now. Go with her, baby. Y'all, if anybody get a no, anybody get a no, tell them you need to be saved. Hallelujah. Secondly, is this your first time here? Huh? This is not your first time here. You believe God is leading you to Mount Zion to get up under the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ in this place while the saints are still praying. And you want to start your membership process, will you raise your hand now and raise it high? Come on, baby. Is there somebody else? Is there somebody else? Hallelujah. 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 Yes, God. Bless you. Mother. Bless you, baby. Bless you. Bless you. Go with him. Go with her, baby. Is there another? <laughs> to the utmost, Jesus said, to the utmost, Jesus said, he will take and uh, <laughs> that's all right, Zion. Hallelujah. Jesus. Precious ones, before we take your seat, I want everybody, especially my people, just lift your hand and say, Lord, teach me. Lord, teach me. Obedience. Obedience. And you may be seated. It is very important today that our tithers tithe, which should be the whole church, Amen. and that you give sacrificially. Amen, somebody. Amen. Don't neglect that, precious ones. Don't neglect it. Hallelujah. I'm going to move to a storefront and only allow certain ones of y'all in. Amen. It is time for the tithers to come and buy their ground. Let's all, let's all stand. Every tither in the house today stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All those under the sound of my voice who are fed from this storehouse.